Hi everyone, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're continuing a two-part series on this Wonder Woman commission here. So up next is the Copic color stage. So uh, let's let's just jump right into the colors, huh? Okay, so here's our line art for Wonder Woman. And as we see here from the uh, the 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 open area I've left in her dark hair, we'll be coming in with a lot of blues and such for and grays for her hair so the light is pretty much coming from above it's a daytime scene so we're kind of considering the the sun as the light source so we'll be adding we'll be leaving some open areas for some highlights as we go and we'll start with the skin tones first so we'll start with some e double zero and i want to sculpt out the shapes as always with the planes of the face the planes being the cheek the jawline, underneath the eyes, the bridge of the nose, everywhere where her, her skull would cut a different angle. Though they're very subtle angles, they're still kind of an angle nonetheless. Kind of curved angles maybe is a way we could put it. So I just kind of slowly work in each section, each, each chunk of angles as I sculpt in the color, leaving a little bit of white for places where I'd put highlights, like on the cheeks, a little bit there in the forehead, definitely there on the tip of the nose, a little bit on the chin. Anywhere that is covered by hair or another body part, it's going to be more filled in with color because that's where more shadow would fall. It's covered up the shadow of created by the hair. This tucked in arm would get less light. And through the chest here. Letting the brush tip feather. So a nice, get a nice gradation of color. Show the roundedness of her chest, of her muscles. Definitely some things I'm keeping in mind. Also, I, I kind of like to color in the direction of the flow of the muscle, like from the shoulder here, from the chest towards the shoulder down the bicep here. So a little bit of highlight right there on the on the bicep, but less here on the triceps and underneath because the light is, it's, these parts are hidden from the light. Leave a little bit of open area for that elbow. Now onto the fist here. Across each finger, still leaving a little bit of highlight. I might come in with more, with a lighter color and use up some of that white space, but leaving it there gives me the option. It's nice to have options. Add a second layer of color to the armpit there, underneath the chin, across the bridge of the nose, underneath the eyes. Tackle this fist now. Leaving just a little bit of white on the knuckles. Now let's come down here to the, the legs. heavier color on the bottom parts of the legs. Leaving some open board for the highlight or come in with lighter colors maybe. A little darker here under 
where the thigh overlaps the 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 calf muscle it's going to be it's going to be darker because the light if the light's hitting here this little part we're going to be able to create some fun shadows there and create some depth maybe a little bit of a highlight on the on the back of the calf muscle there i'm going to tackle this this leg very similar mentality same way of thinking upper part of the knee is going to have more light than the lower part down to the shin and even though i didn't use line work to de define her thigh muscles here i can still do that with color a bit not going to overly render it. I don't want it too heavily rendered. It's definitely something I'm going to think about. And just feather it. When I say feather, it's letting the brush tip go. Like I push down harder for more ink and then gently pull up to where it creates a a, a softer line of color. Like here I'm pushing down harder, and then if I want to have a lighter color, just ease, pulling up is a more exaggerated motion of what I'm doing, but that's the mentality. Because if I want less, less color, press down with less force. And so I'm pulling over and up. So it feathers out. So less of the brush tip is touching the board. So it creates a feathered, a feathered uh, look. Okay. So I'll probably come in with here with a slightly darker shade for a little sculpting of color. The E01, which I often use as a darker color if I start with the E0. I'm considering some of the shadow areas. Any place I want a little bit more of a darker color. I will come in with my cool grays later on for some more realistic shadows. But these, the secondary color here gives a little more life, a little more color option for for each segment that I'm coloring, whether it be skin tones, hair, parts of her costume, I'll come in with several different colors before getting to the actual shadow stage. Sculpting the muscles just a bit. We want Wonder Woman to look powerful and strong and muscular, but kind of that lean muscle is kind of what I'm going for. Not, maybe not necessarily a heavy bodybuilding sort of muscle, but if that's the way you want to roll with your Wonder Woman, totally cool. So I'm adding a little bit of a darker color through here, but I'm leaving the, the E00 here and here, and then a darker color here. This is almost like a little bit of a reflected light. Follow suit on the other leg as well. On the knee and down onto the shin. See how we're starting to sculpt out? We're starting to see the mus musculature take shape. Base color mixed with a secondary color here, get it starting to let things take, take shape and form. Starting to get a three-dimensional sort of feel as Wonder Woman starts to come to life with the color. One of the really fun parts about coloring is seeing the line work start to come to life. I often like to go in with a second coat. I like to do heavy saturation with my color. Real, I really like the vibrancy. It's kind of my style when it comes to Copics and coloring. I like the vibrancy of the color. So I go through a lot of ink, but it's worth it.
that's the nice thing about Copics is they are refillable. So well, let's see, before I go to a lighter color, I'm gonna add some of my pinks, my the rosy colors I like to put into my characters. So like a little bit here on the nose, some R20. Across the nostril, nostril around the tip of the nose. Still keeping in mind that little bit of white there for the highlight. Just a little bit there on the cheek. Just boop, boop, like that. I'm gonna blend that through a little bit later on. Want a little bit of rosiness here on the shoulder and on the elbow. Just a teeny bit through the knuckles, so just one little swipe. We don't wanna go crazy with the pink here. We want that a nice, subtle, subtle sort of life. A little bit here in the chest. Let's do the same for the knees. Just kind of cutting in with a brush tip. Boop, boop, boop. Because we're going to blend this with lighter colors soon. I just want a nice vibrant base. Maybe a little bit at the bend here of the backside. A little bit through the, the pit slash muscles. A little bit on the chin. Just a little bit. A little bit here on the inner thigh, a little bit here on the calf. Now I'm going to be able to come in here with a lighter shade of pink that I like to use, the R00. Kind of smush things around, blend things around. Let the, the ink of the R00 activate the, the R two zero and the E zero zero and E zero one I've put down. They're all starting to co-mingle with each other and starting to blend together. It softens those hard cuts I put down with the R two zero. Really softens it, blends it in, can look natural. Natural natural? Natural. That's okay to leave hard cuts. It's actually good to leave some hard cuts. So you can kind of just trial and error. That's what I do, trial and error. Just experiment and see what develops. But I like to blend through that harder pink and really kind of soften it into the skin tones, the E skin tones I'd used eat into the little bit of the white white spots I've left open to give that sense of life. That rosiness that we're using the pinks for, blending that through so it's so it's nice and rosy. Maybe come in with a second coat. Like I said, I like to really saturate my illustrations with the ink. Gonna tackle some of these harder cuts I put through the knee, soften them out with this rosy shade of very light pink. Hit the other leg now. sculpt it through there. All right. I like to take in the entire illustration and see where certain colors might need to be beefed up. So if a certain area is looking a little darker or a certain area is looking a little lighter, I can then add a second coat so it all kind of sort of matches. 
as best as possible. All right, so that takes care of Wonder Woman's skin tones. Let's color the yellow portions of her costume. So we're gonna be going for sort of a gold sort of look. We want it to look like a reflective gold approach. So I'm gonna start with some Y21. And I'm gonna start coloring the tiara here. I'm gonna think of it as like we have the center part here. I'm leaving some white on this side, putting some darker shade through there. Well, let's use this also for her W. So keeping in mind the shape of her chest, the roundedness of her breasts, we're gonna keep in mind that roundedness. So I'm doing that feathering touch again there where it goes from dark to light, dark to light. So I have a nice soft gradation of color. Leaving some white open for that reflective gold vibe, feel, texture. Still keeping in mind the roundedness. Want to maintain the shape. Keeping in mind the shape and how the color would wrap around that shape. Same here with her belt. Get a little, leave a little white there on the outside, but because of the way she's positioned, there's gonna be more shadows through the midsection here because less light is getting to it. So I'm keeping that in mind. That's the story I'm telling. And then, but there would still be some light that hits over here on this side. More, more white right there. We'll leave a little white streak right there. So that's starting to get our base color down. Now I'm gonna come in with a lighter shade of yellow, my Y13. You probably saw me use a lot of these, these shades in my X-Men videos. These are some of my go-to colors, my reds, yellows, blues. These are the ones that I found to be my favorite and I use for most, if not almost all, my superhero illustrations. So now I'm going over all that Y21 and then pulling into the white here a little bit more with this Y13. Let's uh, tackle the belt. Going over that Y21 with this Y13 really pumps up the vibrancy of this, of this yellow. And um, let's see, let's, try, let's color her lips. Let's do her lips. I'm gonna start with a darker shade, RV95. I'm gonna work from dark to light. So I'm gonna hit the bottom of the lip, bottom of the bottom lip. In fact, let's push in a little bit closer so you can really see the details that I'm putting in the face here. So I started with the bottom of the bottom lip and a little bit of the, more of the top lip to start to sculpt in that color. I'm gonna come in with some R85. It's a, kind of gave her some pinkish red lips. Not full on red, but not light, bright pink. Somewhere kind of in the middle. So now I'm going over that R95 I just put down and cutting into the white here a little bit with this R85. Since this is such a smaller shot, couldn't really maintain the white highlight I wanted, so I'll come back in with some white gel pen to drop in that white highlight later on towards the end of the end of this video. And while we're pushed in close here, let's do some work on her eyes. I want to give her kind of a eye shadow, so I'm going to start with an E13. I pay attention to like makeup ads and commercials to see what people are wearing, kind of utilize that when I do colors for, especially the female characters. What would be, what would, the, what would their look 
be? What would it be? What would be the choices they might make? So a little E13, it's a very light shade of brown in the E spectrum that I'm working in. Um, let's see, let's put some blue in her eyes. Gonna start with some B14. Putting those near the little white highlight I'd left in the ink stage. And now some B12. Blend that B14 into that white area there. Now I'll just a little, little bit of B000. Just for like the eyeball part. Just a little bit underneath that top lid to really sculpt out the shape of the eyeball, almost like it's a shadow. It's a very subtle little trick I like to do. And while we're pushed in close, this is a nice uh, placement here, let's keep working with some of the stuff that's on, near, or around her face, and that would be her tiara and earrings. Need some reds, so we're coming in with some R27 here initially. Now, if you saw the first video, you saw that I inked um, most of this, in fact, if not all of this, with colored multiliners and microns. And that was for this kind of really fun, almost animated sort of look. And so each color of her body, as I hopefully I mentioned in video one, her skin tone and yellows inked with brown, her hair inked with black. For her silver gauntlets, I inked with a, a traditional blue. For the reds, a, a burgundy, fear for the star, the earrings, the top of her um, tunic, and then blue here, a darker blue for the, the star-spangled underpants, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and then the burgundy here for the boot, and the, the white part of the boot, use some light gray, and then black for the rocks brown for the golden lasso. So, so I, I was already keeping in mind the types of colors I would be coloring with as to my color choice for the, uh, the line work. Let's give her some red nails. Coloring on each side, leaving a little highlight so it's a shiny, glossy uh, manicure she has here before she's gotten so so deep into battle that she's ruined her her manicure there. Oops, I'm so sorry, that wasn't on screen, but just to kind of go over what I did, just on each side, leaving a little white highlight running right down the middle. Let's uh, tackle this part of her uniform. Keeping in mind the shapes of her body and letting the color reflect that, those organic shapes. From the chest to the rib cage. And the further we move towards the abdomen here, because of the way she's posed, less light is gonna hit here, so we're gonna have less, less of a highlight. We want that shadow, we want that depth. We want that three-dimensional sort of feel. So we gotta keep these things in mind. All the things I'm thinking about when I do my illustrations. Shape and form, lighting, and how am I gonna translate that? These are the things, we, this is why we practice over and over and over again, to make all these, these thought processes, processes, processes? What is the correct plural for that? I should look that up. Uh, to make all these, these ways we think, <laughs> Uh, second nature. You want it to be so well practiced that it just becomes just a, well, I don't think there's a better word for it. Second nature. So keep practicing your shapes. Keep studying. In fact, I still study and practice. I mean, I still have to think about my shapes, There's, but some decisions I just know instantly. That's, that's not going to Light's not going to hit that. It's going to be more shadowed, so it's going to be darker. Light's going to hit here. We're going to have more of a highlight. 
we're going to need to leave room for lighter colors. So we'll come in with some lighter shades of red here in a little bit, but I want to make sure we get our boots while we're still using this R27. Leaving the back of her boot there open for some uh, lighter shade of red. Keeping in mind, as I was doing with the inks, with the line work, the wrinkles of the boots as they bunch up around her, her ankles, the wrinkles at the ankles, and then there behind the rock, there we go. So keep, always keeping these things in mind, maybe a little bit more red right there to cut the folds the different angles, the cuts, the folds. All right, now let's come in with some R24 for some lighter shades. So we'll start back at the top, work our way down. Leaving a little teeny tiny highlight there because of the metallic nature of her, her tiara. But these earrings are kind of falling under the hair. If I want to highlight, I can go in and put a little highlight in with um, white gel pen. Maybe the teeniest, tiniest sliver of a highlight left on the upper part portion of her costume. But not much. Going over this R24 or R27 with the R24, much like I did with going with the Y13 over the Y21, just to pump up that vibrancy. Do that same here with the with the boots. Maybe leaving a really teeny tiny highlight running down the back of the boot there. Just super subtle. A few little highlights there in the fold of the boot. Right on the ankle there. Pump up the vibrancy on this side just so it's uniform. A consistent coloring. Do another one of those little teeny tiny highlights on the back of the boot. As well. All right, that squares away the reds for now, I believe. Let's color the uh, let's color her blue shorts, and we're going let's go pretty vibrant with these blues, at least here starting off. So let's start with some B zero five. Again, keeping in mind the shapes of her hips and her backside here as things curve and arc around. Want to maintain curvature, that believability of, of the body and how her legs and hips and the muscles create shapes. As best as possible. As close as I can get, at least. It's coming with a little bit of B04 now. It's a little bit of a lighter shade. Let's come in with some B01. Just gonna fill all that part in right there. Maybe leaving the teeniest, tiniest highlight 
little bit of white on right there. There we go. Now for the whites of her stars, I'm going to start the process with a little B double zero. Oh, I'm sorry, B triple zero. B triple zero. And we'll use this, start the same process with the whites of her boots. We'll be coming in with some light gray a bit later on when we get to the gray marker stage. But for now, starting with part one, of this effect with some with the B triple zero, and this is I always find this to be fun is with the wrinkles here, continuing that wrinkle look. I've established it with the line work, so I know where to go, and I'm going to feather this up as we move closer to the light. A little more shadow on the inside of the leg, so just keep that going up but we have more vibrancy to less vibrancy because I push down more and then ease up as I pull the marker up. Maybe a little bit right there. A little bit across the top of her foot. Pump up the vibrancy right there. Now we're gonna go over these light blues with some grays later on, much like you might have seen me do on the X-Men group shot video that I just did recently with the with Iceman and things like that. Oh, you know what? I need to keep that B triple zero going on because then we're gonna do a silvery look here for her her gauntlets. So keep we're still working with this B triple zero initially here keeping most of the color on the inside of these details. Oops, I'm so sorry. P keeping the color on the inside of these, uh, of the line work here. So leaving the outer parts as the white for the brightest part of the highlight, and then pulling through the center here, leaving a white strip down the middle. This will help convey a silvery sort of look, especially when we move into the gray scale, gray stage. Now we want to, um, Pause on, on the gauntlets, more to come for those, like I said, at the gray stage. But now we want to put in some color for her hair. And this will be a series of blues and grays as well. Blues, because it's just, that's kind of traditionally how they used to color Superman, Wonder Woman's, Bruce Wayne's hair, because it was black, to convey that back in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Due to printing processes, they used blue. Um, but but they don't really have blue hair, they have black hair. So the highlight, it was translated as blue. But now that we have computer coloring, more lush printing process options, we can uh, kind of make it look a little more quote unquote realistic or a, a somewhat realistic approach. So I'm still doing that feathering technique Especially in the hair here, it can kind of give that softness, that soft flow to the individual hairs without coloring each individual hair. Keeping in mind that center highlight that can run through, through the hair there because Wonder Woman has such healthy, gorgeous Pantene Pro-V Perp Plus bounce body and shine to her hair. I'm going to keep in mind that how, how to work that highlight. But as we move underneath the, the big quaff, the big wave of hair there, under here, it's going to be darker. And under here, even darker. So I'm thinking about where is the light hitting and where is it not hitting? Just as I was doing with like her costume and the abdomen similar thoughts here but this part of hair is kind of curving out peeking out so we're going to have a little more highlight we're going to have room to put a highlight so 
So everywhere, so a good rule of thumb is where the, where the hair bends, it's a fun place to put a highlight. So you can use that when you're doing your illustrations. Look at the shapes. Where is the hair bending? Where is it curving? That might be the ideal place to drop in that, that fun highlight for that healthy body Pro-V. Body and shine to the hair. But always, and oftentimes at least, keeping in mind, what are my shapes? Where is my light? Where is my shadow? And if you're ever in doubt, look at real life. Look up some Pantene Pro-V ads. You know, like the, like the hair color, the boxes of hair color. They've got the pictures of the person with the, you know, this is what your hair will look like if you use this product. Look at those photos. Look at, look at the, the shine and, and body to the hair. Dark hair, blonde hair, red hair, colored hair of all sorts. And notice the shapes. Look at the shapes. What do the shapes tell you? How can you utilize those shapes? Look at real life reference. And that will help your characters start to take on the believability, the accuracy that you're looking for. It can help. It's a great, great tool to uh, kind of get to that place you want to be with your art, that sort of study. Little tiny highlight right there. And here on this side, right where that hair is curving and bending, let's put a little white highlight right through there. Curves and bends again. How about another highlight? Stuff down closer to the ear, hairs folding other over other shapes of hair. Then thicken or darken that intensity of color. Another bend, another highlight. Don't have to do it for every bend, a lot of the big ones, we get to choose. We can figure it out as we go. That's what I do. Indiana Jones style, make it up as you go along. Trial and error is totally cool as far as I'm concerned. That's how I got, that's how I got here with Copics, was just trying and seeing what I learned from the process. Maybe things worked out, maybe things didn't. If it didn't, what didn't work? What, what didn't happen the way I wanted it to? Maybe next time, try to remember, don't do that again. <laughs> try something different. But just bit by bit by bit, trying and learning. Pay attention to the results. See what you're happy with, see what you're not happy with. Things you're not happy with, just make a little change for next time. All right, so I think that's just about got the blue portion of her hair squared away. Just pumping up a little more vibrancy here. Heating into that little, those white bits just a little bit more. Okay. So we've pretty much got all the main colors on Wonder Woman done, except for her lasso. Still need to tackle that and the rocks that she is standing on. So let's do the lasso first. Now her lasso glow, essentially should be glowing uh, yellow. You know, it's her magic lasso. Um, what I'm gonna do is use a very vibrant shade of yellow, the Y06. It's very different than what I usually use for these types of costume colors, it's because it's so bright and vibrant. 
that I like to use it for something like this. I'm going to leave chunks of white in here. I can dab in some, some dots. I can make some, some yellow chunks. But leaving the white in there will help kind of give a sense of the, 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 the sparkly magic of it all. Sparkly magic. So I'm just going to keep just rolling down the line of the of the the rope I've drawn in. And using the brown works well for yellow colors here. You might want to use an orange if you have an orange micron, that would look that would work well. But um, historically I've used use brown. Maybe someday I'll grab an orange micron from the uh, art supply store. But I like all of my colored lines to be a little bit darker than the color of whatever the object is itself, so that the line work stays visible. Now to color in the each individual rope, there are, there are places where there is rope and then places where there is gaps. And I want to be mindful not to color a gap as rope. So I have to really pay attention as best I can to where does the rope start and stop. And then I just follow along. Helps me kind of see the shapes that I was making, what I was intending. So I remember everything as accurately as what I was intending as possible. So I just about have the ropes done here. Her magic lasso. Just got a few more chunks. And then we'll color up some rocks. Okay, so that's got the basic part of the yellow down. I'll probably come in with a let's go ahead and add a secondary yellow shade here for some shadow, a sense of shadow. So I'm coming in with some Y08. I was using the Y06 before. Hopefully I said the code correctly. Now I'm adding some a little bit of darker shade, like from behind the hands, from where the rope is coming out from the hands underneath that arc. bottom portions. Out from the hands, around and down. The portions that are a little further away from us, further away from the light, a little more inside there. But then where, where things are a little closer to us, there'd be less, less of this darker shade of yellow. Adding the darker shade can kind of help give a little bit of sense of depth, even with all this tangle of, of rope here. Okay. That squares her magic lasso away for now. Let's add some shades to the rocks here. Um, just gonna do a little bit of a test color here. Let's see what some E84 looks like. So do a little E84, Let's see, E55. It's a little too light of a shade. Let's try this E57. Do I want to go that brown? Probably working a lot of gray here. Let's try the E3s I have, the E3-4, the E3-1. Let's 
try the E25. Just trying to figure out which ones I'd want to use. I think right now, I'm definitely going to come in with a lot of gray, but I do want some brown. Actually, you know what? I might go just strictly gray. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think I'm going to go with neutral grays and then come in with some shades of brown um, momentarily. So let's grab my collection of gray markers. Let's see what we can do with some, some neutral grays. Let's keep the test board out. Let's start with a kind of a neutral six. That'll be kind of dark. I want, it, I want more of a granite sort of feel, you know? So I want some gray. I'm gonna go more gray with this, I think. So I have some neutral five, six, five, four. Yeah, I think I'll probably start with a five and then work my way lighter. Neutral three, as you see, I'm creating a, a gradation here. Just kind of doing a test like this can save you from messing up a, an illustration. If you're not quite sure which colors to use, do a test, just do some test swatches to see which color, which colors do I like? Do I wanna go brown? Do I wanna go gray? What if I took some of this neutral two and then put it over that shade of E31 and E34? Kinda of like that. Actually, I probably will utilize that, but I think I'm gonna start with the grays first. So I'm gonna work from dark to light. So I'm gonna hit more of the shadowy spots. And I'm just gonna let the brush tip kind of dance across the page. Not gonna overthink it. Or I'm gonna try not to overthink it. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier said than done. And just let it really be organic because rocks are organic. Unless someone sculpted it, if we find it in nature, it's gonna have that, that organic sort of quality to it. So I want the colors to be more chaotic and organic. So I started with a neutral six. Now I'm gonna to go to the neutral gray four. And remember our light's coming from above. So we're gonna get lighter as we move further up the rock slide here. So just creating these these rock-like textures, and really, it's you don't have to you don't have to think or worry too much about it. It's almost like you're heading into Bob Ross sort of town, you know. It's just let the let it happen naturally. If you make a mistake, who cares? It's nature. It's not a mistake. It's a happy accident. <laughs> just let it be, you know. Just let it be what it is, and don't even really don't really concern yourself too much with it. In fact, you might come back the next day and look at your illustration and go, you know what? I kind of like how that turned out. I've done that so many times. Go to bed thinking, oh man, I jacked that illustration up. Come back the next day, look at it with a fresh eye. Ah, oh, dude, I really actually like that effect. Now some neutral two. Of course, the background's just fading out into oblivion here at the bottom. Just let that, let's just let that be as well. So as I blend these colors together, they're starting to smush all together. The lighter shades of ink activating the darker shades of ink and merging together to create nice gradations and blending. And as you can see there, the rocks really coming together. Really glad I went with the grays first. Now let's see, you know, instead of brown, I think I'm gonna use some shades of kind of this grayish bluish green. Let's do a little test first before I commit some BG90. Where, where is, all right, there we go. You know, I think this kind of really subtle shade of bluish green with gray might look kind of nice. Kind of like some sort of, uh, what's the word, I'm, what's the word? Ah, can't think of the geological word for it. But it exists. The word exists. 
even though I can't think of it. Now I'm going to just, not chlorine, not chlorine's not right, not chlorophyll, that's for plants. I want to think it starts with a C. But you know that kind of green, quartz? No, is it quartz? That can't be right either. What word am I thinking of? If there are any geologists that are watching, feel free to comment in below and tell me what word I'm trying to think here. That kind of greenish sort of color to rocks, certain rocks. I don't know. It'd take a geologist to explain. I am not a geologist at all. So thank you for all your hard work, geologists. But yeah, I'm liking that, that kind of subtle greenish, grayish sort of color to it. Really like that. Thank you, BG90. Let's come in with some BG93. Just add just a few little cuts here and there. Some little, little bips and bops and bloops. So much fun working with the brush tip that allows these sorts of textures and cuts. All right, so that takes care of the rocks. That works for me. Leaving some white on here for some more calcified. Is calcified the word I'm looking for? I don't know, it's not quite a, I guess in a sense it can be a highlight, but there's who knows what sort of minerals are all up inside these rocks. Like I said, I'm not a geologist, though I've seen one on TV. All right, now it's time for the shadows. I'm gonna add some of the more realistic style shadowing uh, instead of just secondary colors. We're gonna use uh, some cool grays. So I'm gonna start with the cool gray one. And any, since the light's coming from above, the bottom side, so I can't believe that was off camera, just coloring across the knuckles there. See, right it straight across there, boom. Now we have this plane and then the next knuckle. See how our knuckles do that? Boom, boom. Did the same thing for Wonder Woman right there. This meaty part of her palms, that's hidden from the, sh the, the light, so there's gonna be more shadow there. Tucked in between each finger, just a little, little swipe, a little line. Maybe a little bit on the bottom side of the knuckles there. Giving her some, some hard knuckles. Now for the under part of the arm. I'm, I'm feathering in this, uh, the, this, this light gray. Just coming in just real lightly with the marker. Just letting it dance across, lightly across the page to get a nice light shade of gray. Because if I went darker, I can always apply more. But this armpit is really going to be away from the light, so we're going to have a lot more shadow there. This side of her breast, just pulling away, starting at the, the base there, pulling towards and away. Underneath the hair there, so it starts to create that roundedness. Same here at the cleavage. It's going to create that roundedness. Same with underneath the neck, or under the chin, onto the neck muscles. I use a lot of gray here through this arm tucked back there. It's going to be further away from the light. Let's do these knuckles over here. And now for the uh, the knees, I'm gonna start lower and work our way up. That little bony part of the knee and maybe a little bit right there. A little bit on the calf muscle. Remember how we were putting that E01 through here? I'm gonna do that here with the uh, cool gray one. through this thigh, leaving a little bit of the, the bottom portion there, leaving that the skin tone, not the gray, for that reflected light, just a little bit. 
kind of bouncing up off the these calcified rocks. I really think calcified might have been the word I was looking for. Still might be the wrong word. If it is, thank you for correcting me, geologist viewers. But just want a little bit of that reflective light. Just a little bit of a bounce, bounce back from the light. I'm going to use the same cool gray one over this blue to create that grayish blue sort of shadowy look. Just feathering it in. More concentrated here, then feather up, feather up, feather up, feather up. Hard cuts and hard cuts here, softer cuts or softer feathering up that way really can uh, can be cool. Really like how that can, it, it makes it fun. It's like, it's fun to see it start to come together. A little more shadow here underneath her hair where her hair is falling on her shoulders. A little heavier shadow there. It starts to really create that hard cut and that heavier gray right there. Still using the cool gray one. Really gives that sense of that shadow and it really creates that, that three dimensional look. It's like it really comes together. Little, let's go a little darker here in the armpit because light's just not going to hit that pit. Just a little bit across the shoulder there. Just that little cut there. Boom, muscle definition. Got to be careful not to do too much. Definitely have learned from past, I don't want to say mistakes, but past attempts that I wasn't happy with. Learned. I've learned. And I'll probably learn that lesson again. And that's okay. It's okay to relearn our lessons. If we make if we make an attempt that doesn't work out, it's okay to relearn again. Some cool gray over the, the ears here because they are hidden by the hair. Let's put some cool gray, still the same cool gray one underneath her, her eyes and eyebrows, right there, that upper part of the eye. Kind of a sort of a makeup sense, but also in sort of a shadow sense. Down the bridge of the nose there and underneath the nose. I love dropping that little shadow underneath the nose. Just makes it pop right off the face. Gives that three dimensional sort of vibe. Just that little bit of gray there. Gonna pull some gray right down this, this jawline here. See how her face is starting to take sh more shape because the hair is flipping over this part of the head. Put a little gray like that. Just a little cut of gray right there. Not gonna go all the way to the chin, just right there, right there on the cheek. That's enough, that's enough. A little bit there on the chin. Maybe a little darker there underneath the earring. And we can always go back over with the same color or with a darker color if we need to to create more vibrancy or, or, or saturation of color. It's probably a much better word, better way to put that. So I'm going to come in with some cool gray too. I'm going to use this on the yellow portions. So that seam that would run right down the center of her tiara, putting a shadow right there. Just run it right down the center. I put a little shadow over here where the hair is coming over it. All right, let's, and so we're kind of trying to go for that metal effect. We're getting that metal effect going. Let's go here for the W here. Always keeping in mind the, the, sh the, the shape of whatever body part we're working with. So we want to maintain the roundedness here. So putting this gray line through here, leaving some white, or is, I'm not, I'm sorry, not white, the yellow on that outer edge there, reflected light, shadow, back to the yellow, bright highlight, and then heading back into the deeper shadows in the center. And for this side, we're just gonna cut with little, three little separate cuts, leaving a little bit of the yellow at the top there, right across the top for kind of where the light would be hitting. 
a little bit. And you can try different tricks on how you want to render your gold and silver and metal sort of looks. Try different techniques. Where do you want to play with shadow? Now through the abdomen, remember we said that since she's bent over a little bit like this, hunched over, this part of her abdomen's not going to see as much light, so it's going to get more shadow. So there we go. Don't want to eat up too much of the yellow down there, but we have just enough to convey a sense of shadow and form there. I'm going to use a little bit of this cool gray too, just for a little darker shadow coming up from where she's standing behind the rocks. Not going up as far as I did with the cool gray one, just a little bit right there. I'm going to do the same here, just a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Right down the center of her boot there. And now we're just creating those shapes, letting the, the brush tip create the shapes. I'm going to come in with a little bit of this cool gray too into certain parts of the shadows of her, her body. Like a little cut right there on the knee underneath the thigh where it meets the calf. A little bit right there. A little bit right there. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just a little. Right there. Boop. Good. With the stars, actually I should probably put some cool gray one right there. We'll bring that in back in in just a second. Still darkening up that armpit. I keep working that armpit. Just trying to get the right amount of shadow. Maybe right over here on this part of where her arm bends. Just right there, just a little bit. And definitely under these knuckles. I want it to be even darker because these knuckles are really hidden from the light and that part of her palm as well. And under her chin, yes, a little bit darker. Under this part of her face because of her neck and her hair overlapping. On that part right there. Maybe a little bit more under her eyes. I'm gonna make it a little more smoky. So, and maybe right here under this part of the uh, upper arm, just a little bit more gray, a little bit darker. A few little dots right here on her knuckle there and through the palm. We're going to use some of this cool gray too for her magic lasso. There's still going to be a little bit of a shadow, like in these deeper recesses of the coils of her lasso. I want there to be a little more shadow. I want to create that sense of depth. Don't need a lot of it where, it, where it's uh, a little further out here towards the light. We can leave that as is, but up under here where her hand is holding it, we're gonna let that cast more of a shadow. Where this, the tail end here is flipping around behind the other coils. Leave that be, or leave, let that look, get darker, I should say. Not leave it be, I'm actually gonna work with that. And same here with her hand right up through there, right down through here where it's coming out from her fist, a little bit right through here, maybe some of the bends. Cool. Just beef up that shadow right there a little bit. All right. Now for her hair, I need to add some, I want to, I don't want it to be quite so blue. I want it to look a little more gray, grayish blue. I don't want her to look, to look gray to where she looks 
older, but I want it to be more of a realistic highlight to the black. So I'm going to come in with some neutral gray four. Starting from the dark parts and just pulling out towards the light, the white. Leaving some of the blue, so it's going from black to gray to blue. To give a realistic sort of uh, shade to the hair, but still maintain that comic book, classic comic book vibe and appeal. More gray up underneath where there'd be shadow, where things are covered. Remember that curve highlight along the bottom portion of that. We can put more, more gray all through here. We can add some of that gray. Definitely all up under through here because it's further, it's like all, all the curls are hiding other curls underneath. So it's all those underneath curls that we want to look darker or to have that shadow. But as we move closer to the light here, sorry if that wasn't on camera, just go over it again. You know me, I like to use a lot of vibrancy in my color, a lot of saturation I should say, so I don't mind going over certain parts multiple times. And now for this side of the hair, same concept, starting from the root. It's always a kind of good rule of thumb to start from the root and pull out and away. That'll kind of help, could possibly help with your ren rendering of hair through this part of the curve, this under curve here, through this part. There we go. Now let's see, we have to add some Forgot to add some cool grays. We got the hair squared away. Well, I just wanted to let y'all know that. We've got the hair just the way I want it. So now we need some cool grays in the reds. I forgot to add cool grays to the reds. So we're going to start with some cool gray three, I think will be a, a good, good color to use. All the same things I was thinking about before with the yellows apply in many ways to the reds here. The shadows, the shape, the form. Keeping that, keeping that in mind. Always thinking of that as best as possible, as much as possible. Down here on the boots. Just cutting with that color. Much like I did with this portion, it's such a fun part. It's, I just really have fun with that. Is keeping in mind the wrinkles, the angles that are gonna cut. It takes a lot of practice. Keep practicing, gang. But uh letting it feather up, just because we're creating shapes. Look at these shapes we've created here for the eye to play with. That is like some of the, the icing on the cake for me. It's like when those, those cut moments, it's like the line work has set me up so I can come in with color and, and create these cuts. Gotta be careful not to overwork it to where I've worked it too far. And that kind of comes with trial and error but now we've created with line and these color shapes and featherings and cuts, the illusion of wrinkles. That boot looks really bunchy and wrinkled around her ankle. And that's some of my favorite. Adam Hughes, I saw Adam Hughes really do that a lot with his Wonder Woman covers. He'd give her the, like, these, these boots that were kind of bunchy around the ankle. I thought that was such a cool look. Now mine aren't quite as bunchy as his. It's kind of like a medium, happy medium between what Jose Luis Garcia Lopez did or George Perez did with a more tighter fit boot that hugs the, the leg. 
mixed with uh, starting up here, but then mixing it with just a little bit of the bunchiness that maybe Adam Hughes would do. I'm kind of like trying to find that middle ground between those two styles of boot. But man, creating little wrinkles like that, so much fun, so much fun. Oh, and we need to add some light neutral grays here to her, her gauntlets to create that silver look. You can use cool gray if you don't have any neutral grays, but if you have neutral gray, I suggest that because it can give a bit of a more of a silvery look for the gauntlets as opposed to a, uh, this kind of shadow for white of her maybe cloth, vinyl, whatever, leather, pleather, whatever it is that she has for her boots. So the diff different shades of gray can create different lighter textures or, or not textures, but uh, effects looks. So just going over that B triple zero with this neutral gray one. Gonna do the same for this side over here. Keeping that center, the outside and center whites, white white portions as that bright white highlight. We can always come back in with some more blue if needed. I think I want to add just a little bit of B01 to really give that a bit more of a vibrant, like maybe right on this side, yeah. Yeah, it gives it a little bit more punch. Maybe just a little bit there. It's almost like it's reflecting the sky in a sense. So a little bit there and then a little bit down here. Because essentially what we're doing with our metals, whether it be gold or silver or chrome or whatever it is, it's reflecting the world around it. So, so this is kind of like reflecting the world, like the horizon, maybe I don't know, the sky, so, you know, we're using a lot of line art here, but that's that's the mentality, is that this is the environment around her. So that would be like the land, and then this is the, the sky. Kind of the, maybe reflecting her body a little bit, or the land. So, so this is just how we kind of interpret it with comic book line art. That's the mentality there, is this is reflecting the world. So, now if I wanted to, I could get really detailed maybe, if it was a real close-up shot and really make it, you're seeing the reflection of whatever it is in the um, the squiggle lines, whether it be her body, maybe someone attacking, what if it's Giganta or Cheetah or something like that. Just just things to think about. Same, th I was doing the same thing here with her her tiara. These lines here reflecting reflecting the dark parts of the environment, the darker parts, which is usually the horizon or other figures. So let's see, oh, we're just about done. I've got one more little trick here to do. It's kind of a background element that I wanna add to this commission. Oops. Sorry, gang, my desk is in the Wires are a little crossed. What I want to, oh, we'll pull this back a little bit because we're doing a big, big background thing. So we don't have to be so close. Gonna add a little bit of a sky here. Just wanna try to figure out how I'm gonna cut this shape. Cause I don't wanna create tangents. That's when two lines line up together too, too symmetrically, too perfectly. Like I don't want to have, like if, teach you what a tangent which could be. So if I were drawing a line down here and I let this line line up right with that part of her hair, that would be very unappealing to the eye. We don't want that those tangents to happen. So I, I have to be careful of the ropes down here, her lasso. So I think this is a good place to go. These are just guidelines for where I'll be adding some very light shades of blue. Just to give her, putting, just putting a little rectangle here behind her. So you'll see I was very careful not to have the line line up with this part of her hair. So I went a little further up so it doesn't, didn't line up with that line. That'd been very unappealing. Did not want that to happen. And 
Yeah, I think this is a good place to go. So I'm not filling up all the background, just a just a simple graphic shape to uh, give her some uh, give her a little. Hopefully something that'll kind of help her pop off the back, off the uh, white of the paper here a little bit. And so I'm gonna, let's see, I don't need my T-square anymore. Invest in a T-square, gang. It really helps when you're drawing your panel borders, your backgrounds, definitely an awesome tool to have. I've been using that T-square since my Art Institute days, since the 1990s. It is my trusty, rusty, quite literally rusty, not too rusty because it's not leaving rust all over the, the um, art here, that would have really stunk. I'm going to draw in kind of a cloud shape here, just real lightly with this light blue pencil. So I'm going to fill this part in blue and then so she's like on some sort of mountain peak. So we'll have some blue here and then some white there. We'll come up with some light grays here momentarily. So uh, so next up, some B triple zero. I want to pay attention to where I left the white of the cloud. Using my triangle here to draw nice straight lines. Do I have any cloud up here? No, this is all sky up here. Excellent. Cloud there, cloud through there, over here, no cloud, no cloud, no cloud. There we go. Then we have cloud over here. We'll deal with the cloud portion momentarily. Now we're going to get a bit more Bob Rossi here. We're going to color in the sky and then we'll color in some cloud textures afterwards. So now with this, this B triple zero, I'm just filling in my rectangle down to the clouds that I lightly roughed in. You might not even be able to see how how light the, uh, like here right now, I'm going right around the cloud bump that I'd roughed in. And now for, uh, yeah, just a little more there. A little more blue and between the arm and that chunk of cloud underneath the fist behind that part of rope. There we go. And then let's see it. Kind of have the cloud that's just the bottom of that cloud, I should say. Not quite sure the names of these clouds. Cumulonimbus. I'm not sure. I'm not a. I'm not a uh, meteorologist. I'm not a geologist. I'm not a meteorologist. So I don't know the names of my clouds as well as my names of my rocks. But I do remember learning about clouds. So I remember the the cumulus, the nimbus, the cumulonimbus, the cirrus. I know these names of clouds from grade school. I just forget which ones are which. I think cumulus are the really big puffy clouds. I think. And then the cirrus are the real real light streaky clouds. So, but we're not here to discuss science. We're here to discuss art. Okay, and then that's where the other cloud it will be. So now I'm going to come in with some light shades of cool gray. Starting off, I'm going to start off with the cool gray 
zero. And just very lightly create some shadow shapes. Study real life clouds, look at the shapes they make. Because light's hitting the top of the clouds, so we're gonna have more, more lighter or white colors on top. The undersides, of course, are the bottoms where the lights can't be hitting, so we're gonna have darker shadows underneath. Just to try to create some puffiness here. I'm going to go a little bit darker with some cool gray one. See, it's nice to have this cool gray against this neutral gray so the rocks and the clouds are not competing with each other, being similar shades of gray. We'll come in with some very light purple, some V01. Just adds a little color to the clouds. Very light shade of purple. And come in with some BG000. So different shade than what we did with the sky. I'm going to blend some of this into there because clouds have color to them just a little bit depending on the time of day, the light. Okay. And then we will autograph this. I think right through here would be good. We'll add the date over here. Today is the 31st of January 2019. There we go. There is Wonder Woman. So I'll flip the camera around and we'll chat just here a little bit more and sign off. Okay, there we go. Wonder Woman, she's all drawn up. She's, ooh, got a little too, the white balance got off a little bit there. So I should have a link to this uh, in the video description below. And um, yeah, so hopefully I'll have that posted soon. If it's not there, then swing by my social media. She's bound to be on my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, things like that. So gang, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something from this two-parter. And um, yeah, feel free to leave a thumbs up and a, a comment below if you like what you saw. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future art videos. And if you're on the social media, so am I. My links are listed in the video description below as well. Thanks so much. Here's a final uh, shot of, of Wonder Woman. And uh, thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun.